Hi everyone, so today we'll be working on January 2020, paper 2, question 2. This question was given to you all a couple days ago and you had to submit it online for me to mark. So many of you did it, not everyone, but I still appreciate it that you did it. Alright, so um, some of you may have lost some marks in between, but that's okay. That's the whole purpose of doing this video so that you will have a clear understanding of exactly how to answer the questions so you will get full marks. All right, so the first one when oxidation and reduction occur together in a chemical reaction, the reaction is re described as redox. Some substances can act as oxidizing agents while others act as reducing agents. The equation for redox reaction between aqueous copper 2 chloride and aqueous iodide is given below. Alright, so they give you the chemical equation and you had to define reduction in terms of oxidation states. Now, you have quite a few definitions of reduction, but this specifies to define it in terms of oxidation states. All right, so reduction is the decrease in oxidation states or oxidation number. And for that, you get a very easy, simple one mark. Next question. Deduce the oxidation state of copper in copper iodide. So we have two different rules we are going to use here. The first rule is that you're going to use well, this rule, the sum of oxidation states in a compound equals zero, all right? So the sum of copper, sorry, the oxidation states of copper plus the oxidation state of iodine will equal to zero, all right? So the oxidation state of halogens are usually minus one. So we have this information to work with. So when we plug it into the equation, copper plus negative 1, which is the oxidation state of iodide, it will add up to 0, right? And when you just transpose, you get copper is equal to plus 1. And we always include the sign, um, especially when it's positive, you always put the positive in front for oxidation states. All right, so this, just this simple statement here is worth one mark. Part three, define the term oxidizing agent. All right, so this was worth two marks. And um, what I did here, I just underlined where exactly you'll be getting a mark. So I put two definitions of the term oxidizing agent here. Firstly, an oxidizing agent is a substance which oxidizes another species and is itself reduced, all right, or a substance which causes another species to lose electrons and in turn gain electrons. Um, when you answered your question, so those of you who got only one mark for this question, what I did, I highlighted it so you would see exactly where you got one mark. Here I underlined it so you would see where you, how you can get two marks. Part four. With reference to the equation above, state with a reason which substance is acting as an oxidizing agent. All right, so um, in part two, you were asked to calculate the oxidation state of copper in copper iodide, which was worked out to be plus one. All right, we also knew that iodide is minus one, iodine, this is a uh, compound in its free state. It has an oxidation state of zero, right? And Cu2 plus has an oxidation state of plus two. So what we are looking at here is the change in oxidation state. So if you look at um, copper two plus, right? The number or the oxidation state changes from plus two to plus one. Right? This indicates that it was reduced. And we know that any species that is reduced is also called the oxidizing agent. All right? 
Also, you can look at it this way. You can look at the iodine instead. So it went from minus 1 to 0, right? It oxidized. So something had to oxidize the iodine. There's only one thing that can oxidize the iodine. That is the copper 2 plus. Part 5. Solution A was added to a small portion of an aqueous solution of potassium iodide in a test tube. The colorless potassium iodide turned brown. State whether solution A contained an oxidizing agent or a reducing agent. Alright, so what I did here, I just included a little visual for you. So A is being added to a colorless, well, this is, it shows blue, but it's supposed to be colorless, right? So this is initially colorless, and as A is being added, it's being converted to brown. All right, so this basically means the iodide in potassium iodide is being oxidized to iodine, which is giving it that brown color. All right, so for only one mark, Iodide was oxidized to iodine, therefore A contained an oxidizing agent. So if iodide was oxidized, there's only one thing that can oxidize it, that is A. So explain your answer in A part 5. Iodine was iodide was oxidized to iodine, giving rise to the brown color change. Iodine in solution is brown. If potassium iodide was oxidized, this makes solution A the oxidizing agent. All right? So this is also what we refer to as a single displacement reaction. All right? They didn't tell us exactly what is A, so we have to work with this information that we are given. So with that being said, now we have to write a balanced, a balanced chemical equation to show the formation of the brown product in the reaction in A part 5. Now we don't even know what A is, right? So we only use what information is given to us. We know solution A is being added to potassium iodide to produce iodine. Right? So this is like the word equation, and this is how we can write it. So A plus Ki will give us Ka and iodine. So the A has to go somewhere, most likely it will attach to the potassium. All right. And if you look at it carefully, uh, this equation is not balanced. So what we do, we're going to balance it, and we're going to add state symbols. So you'll get one mark to ensure that you have the correct reaction and that it is also balanced, that will be the second mark. All right, so when we balance it, we get 2A aqueous plus 2Ki aqueous to give us 2Ka plus I2 aqueous. All right, it's very simple. You only use the information that is given to you. Right? And this is another form of Ki that we don't use in chemistry. Part B. When a piece of zinc metal is added to aqueous solution copper 2 sulfate in a test tube, a chemical reaction occurred as shown in the equation below. All right, so we have zinc plus copper sulfate to give us zinc sulfate and copper. Describe what is observed with regard to the chemical equation that occurs in the test tube. So the main focus here is describe what is observed. They did not say explain what, explain what happens. All right. So this is worth two marks. So what you should do is to describe two observations. Now this is what it looks like before and after. So zinc is silver, right? And copper sulfate is light blue. Now, when you add the zinc to the copper sulfate, what's going to happen is that it's going to be converted to zinc sulfate and solid copper. Zinc sulfate is clear or colorless. 
and copper well you can't really see the true color here but copper is actually brown pinkish brown so these are the two observations that I want you to know to get those two full marks light blue to colorless right that is for copper sulfate and also copper is being displaced out of solution forming deposits to the bottom of the beaker now I also um, uploaded a video a couple of days ago so you can see exactly what it looks like um, when the reaction is taking place but see one of the substances in equation in the equation in B on page 11 is acting as a reducing agent this statement is purely only there to confuse you it has nothing to do with what they are asking you okay describe a simple laboratory test that can be used to identify a reducing agent so um, this was also given to you in the notes so you just need to be a little bit specific to it, it's like you're giving them a very short concise method so this will be one way of doing it. You can place 5 ml of a substance to be tested into a test tube and slowly add acidified potassium permanganate. Shake the mixture and observe. If a reducing agent is present, then the purple potassium permanganate will turn colorless. This is the most important thing in the topic of redox. Potassium permanganate color change purple to colorless all right um, you can also state that um, you can use acidified potassium dichromate instead of this and the color change will be orange to green right either one is correct all right so if you attempted this past paper question very good what I would like for you to do is to make sure you correct your mistakes all right and attempting past paper questions are very very crucial because you always have to apply yourself in chemistry now if you look at the marks carefully only three out of 15 marks in this question were definitions the rest you actually had to figure it out all right so what you have to do make sure you correct your mistakes and if you still don't understand any part of the question you know you can always communicate with me all right so that's it for today take care bye